Hello and welcome to part two in this seven video series on how to use Linux Mint. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the file manager and how to manage your files and folders in Linux Mint. Free your mind. Now the file manager is named Nemo, after Captain Nemo, the captain of the Nautilus in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. As it says in the About section, Nemo lets you organize files and folders both on your computer and online. So this interface should be pretty common and familiar and easy to understand, but I'm still going to run you through the basics just so you can become even more comfortable with using it. A little brief overview about how the Linux folder system works because it's very different than how the Windows folder system works, the file structure. All of your operating system files and data is typically stored in the C drive, usually C colon backslash and then other folders like Windows or program files or the user folder. So Linux Mint works a little differently because it works off of the Linux file structure, which if we go into here, you'll see that the root directory for uh, the hard drives in Linux is not a C colon backslash, but in fact a single forward slash. The top of the window here shows the present directory that you're in. And from there, you're going to see a lot of folders. Now, this might look a little confusing at first, and it's easy to get lost in, but don't worry. Most of this you don't have to work with on a daily basis, in fact, if at all. There's a lot of benefits to Linux Mint for programmers and developers because everything is open source. That means that people have access to seeing all of the code and configuration files and can easily edit them. But for most end users, including myself, exploring these folders is not needed. So don't worry about that. Don't see all these and say, oh man, this is a CD-ROM, a dev, a run, an SBIN, a USR, a temp. Well, what do I do with all these? Where do I go? Don't worry about it. The only folder you typically ever need to be concerned about is your home folder. And your home folder is like the user folder in Windows. It stores all of the personal profiles. So when you double click on that, and you go in here, you're going to see a folder dedicated for each user on this PC. In this case, my user is generally named user. And so I just double click on that. And that brings in all of my personal files. This brings me back to what's called my home directory. This is the directory that gets started when you're in, uh, when you run Nemo for the first time or when you open a new instance of Nemo. This is the folder that you typically see which is going to be highlighted here as your home folder. So this is kind of your main area where you, where you do most of your work, where you do most of your um, editing or your uh, making Word or browsing the web and downloading things. This is kind of the home directory for all of that. So let's go over a few components of the file manager itself. So at the top you have a uh, familiar menu bar and the menu bar has a couple of different options, very similar that you see in Windows, File, Edit, View, Go, um, Bookmarks, and Help. Which, by the way, if you ever need a reference or something you're not seeing in this video or you want to know something really in-depth about this program, go into uh, Help and use these Help files. There's a very useful uh, set of inf there's a lot of good information in these help files and of course they're in a variety of different languages as well and uh, these guys are really good and really helpful to really understand the details of Linux Mint if you ever need to go past the basics so use these things they're a free resource they're created for you and they're very helpful so when you go to things like file you see the typical creating a new tab which will in your main window create a new tab that you can work in so if you want to work with multiple file or folder locations at the same time, if you're doing something and want to explore your downloads folder and then you want to have your home folder open in a separate uh, tab, you can do that. And the same goes for creating a new window. Uh, you can create a new folder, which will create a new folder in the active directory of the tab that you're in. And then it automatically comes highlighted so you can rename it to whatever you want. But yeah, pretty common things here in the menu bar. These are just things, uh, ways to navigate. Go is a menu option for navigating to uh, parent directories or to different locations on the computer. Even networks, if you have a network that you want to access. 
I'm going to close this tab over here so that we're just working with one tab for the moment. And then I'm going to go back to the home directory. Again, one great helpful feature of Linux Mint is that you can hover your mouse over many different items, whether it be in the desktop or in programs, and it gives you some kind of helpful context uh, tooltip about what that selection is that you're hovered over. So in this case, I've hovered over the home directory, and it says open your personal folder, and it tells you how much free space that I have on this machine. Same with the desktop documents. Now you're going to notice, again, the tooltip is showing the technical directory location of this folder. So in this case, where you normally see like a C colon backslash uh, user, you know, backslash your name and then backslash documents, the Linux file structure is different. And so you can see from the forward slash there, that first forward slash shows you the root directory and then you go into the home directory and then the next forward slash is inside there, it shows in the user directory. And then finally, the final forward slash shows the documents folder, which is the exact same right here as this folder right here. So they're the exact same. Uh, the downloads folder is the same thing. All of these are corresponding to folder locations within your user directory. So music, you'll see the same thing. Home forward slash user forward slash music. Same with pictures videos and there you have it so that's the sidebar the sidebar is a useful way to bookmark favorites and navigate to, to locations quicker the main window is going to have all of your folder and file contents so if i was going to create a new document say a text document and i'd call it test document uh, this is now a new text file that i've created i can double click it to open it up in the uh, text editor in linux mint I can say hello and click the save button. And so now I have this test document. Uh, and this behaves very similar to Windows. It's almost intuitive if you've ever used Windows or even Mac. I mean, you can left click and you can drag these into different locations. You can move it into your documents and then it gets moved or relocated into there. Double clicking on your documents shows that the document is right there and ready to go. If you want to move it to a different directory or edit the file in any way, you can use the conventional right-click feature, and that will give you a context menu with a bunch of different options, whether to open it or to cut or copy, and even to see the properties of the file if you need to get specific details of it. You can also left-click and drag over to one of the sidebar locations here, and that will move it to that directory as well. So I moved it back to the home directory. So when I click on home, it's right there back where it started. This also works the same with folders. You can take folders and move them into other folders. You can move them back out. Right clicking to open up a context menu, you can rename them, you can uh, move them to the trash or delete. Um, a handy little feature that is kind of exclusive to Nemo that I've seen is that you can change the colors of the folder if you want to help organize them better. So if you have folders that are more pertinent for work or for a particular project you're working on, if I was doing something and say I created a folder and I called it business stuff, and now business stuff is a new folder. And let's say I just want to recognize anything to do with business as a purple. So now I can make it purple. And then that way, if I create any corresponding folders like um, business reports, and if I right click and in the context menu, select the color that I want, it really gives you a clear visual on what each folder's purpose is, if that's the way you want to choose to organize it. There are many different applications for this type of uh, organization method using colors, but this is really up to your preference. It's up to however you want to use this uh, feature to organize your folders. So uh, the only uh, two other parts that we're going to cover in this video are the toolbar and the status bar at the bottom here. So the toolbar, is going to be your navigation method as well as showing how folders and files are displayed in the main window. So if you wanted to 
uh, navigate back to the location you were just in previously, you hit the back button and it'll go to where you were before. And then if you want to go forward, it'll bring you back to uh, your proceeding folder that you were just that you just backed away from. And this has a pretty extensive history. You could go back pretty extensively if you really wanted to. Or you can press forward to go all the way to the end. Going to the parent folder just means that you go up in the folder hierarchy. So in this case, this is we are in the user folder. You know this by uh, the green highlighted area here in the address bar. If I was to click the parent button, then I would now go from the user folder to the home folder. And the home folder is the one containing the user folder. So this is the user folder, but I'm actually in the home directory. You can see that from multiple locations from here and from the top of the window itself. If I wanted to go up even further, it would send me back to what's the root directory, which is symbolized by the hard drive symbol over here and by the root uh, forward slash that you see up here. And that's the, the very top directory. That's the topmost directory on the hard drive. And then I could click on one of these uh, buttons to go back, or I could even click in the toolbar in the address bar up here uh, to go back to a location. So the buttons on the right have a few different functions. Um, toggling the location entry actually changes the address bar from the toolbar view to the uh, more technical address bar view. So this is for people who are getting a little bit more familiar with the Linux fi file and folder structure. You can use this to even directly go into a folder if you felt like you wanted to use the keyboard or the uh, command line style, which is what more traditional users are used to. So if I wanted to go into my documents folder, I would type in documents and then forward slash and press the enter key on the keyboard and it immediately brings me into the documents. If I wanted to go back using this method, I could simply backspace and press enter right after the forward slash. And that brings me back into the user folder. If I click this button again, it goes back to the normal view that you just saw before. These other these three buttons on the right are just going to show how the folders and files are displayed. Right now it's in icon view. Uh, if you click this, it goes into list view and this shows you a little bit more details about the folders and the files uh, and also compartmentalizes it to make it easier to sort through if you're looking through uh, for a list like style. And then compact view which is very similar to icon view, but it just does exactly what it says. It compacts the structure a little bit more so you can fill more space uh, with the content that you're looking for in the main window. So the last one uh, in the toolbar is the search button and pressing the search button opens up a search field where you can search for uh, files or folders that, uh, that you want to access or manage. So if I was to duplicate this just for a demonstration, click on copy, right click and open space and click on paste so that I have a copy. And let's say I put the copy here in the documents folder. And if I double click on the documents folder and I right click on the test document, I can rename it to say important top secret document. So now I have two documents in my home directory. One is in the documents folder and one is here in the actual uh, home folder. So if I wanted to search, let's say I have a hundred of these and I'm saying, man, which uh, I need to find one of these documents. So I'm looking for the top secret one. I could click on the magnifying glass to do my search and I could type in the word secret. And you don't have to press enter. This is going to immediately begin searching and filtering out for you. So then you're going to see that document that I just created is now going to be first on the list. It's going to tell me the type and where its location is. And then from there, I can select it in the main window here and even double click it to open it. Um, or right click it to manage it just like I would any other folder or file in this main window. Clicking the magnifying glass again will turn off the search feature and bring me back to my normal viewing layout. So the uh, last part we need to cover is the bottom here. This is the 
uh, status bar. And the status bar just uh, has a few, a couple nifty little features here. This, these two pertain to the sidebar over here, this area. And you can see this button here is called Show Places. And right now it's currently selected. And it's showing our folders in a very uh, icon-friendly format. Some people prefer the more traditional method, with, which looks at the tree view. And if you want to click on Show Tree View, uh, what you'll see now is almost a uh, an old Windows hierarchy method. So it's going to be very, very similar to this, but it's going to be structured in a tree-like format so that you see the home folder here and anything to the right of that is inside of this folder or this directory. Uh, and then clicking on the arrow will now open it up and show any preceding folders. Now this, this will only show folders, it won't show files. So if you wanted to go and look at your documents, you could still left click with the sidebar and look at your documents. And there you go, there's that important top secret document we created. Uh, so you can still left click in the sidebar to view the contents of each folder in the main window, but this is simply just a different way of looking at the folders in your hierarchy. If you're more familiar or comfortable with just the conventional places, this is much uh, simpler in some ways. It's got different icons to help more of a, create more of a visual aid, which is helpful. But that's the two uh, benefits to these buttons right here. The last one is just to simply hide the sidebar. So you can click it, and now the sidebar is going to be hidden, and you have more space if you want to, to work in your main window with your files and your folders. And then clicking this button again brings the sidebar back. A couple of useful things being shown at the bottom here. This will show which folder or file you have selected. If it's a folder, how many files or folders it contains. And then lastly, it shows the general free space of your hard drive uh, that can be stored for personal documents or programs. This is the total amount of free space. So if I click on test document, it's going to say test document selected and it shows seven bytes and then the same amount of free space on my computer. Uh, if I click on documents and I go inside it, it's going to show that documents is selected and it's going to show the containing files and folders of the documents folder and then left clicking shows the details of the important top secret document. I'm going to go back to the home directory and then the last thing here is a very uh, easy but handy tool to adjust the zoom level of how large or small the icons appear inside of your main window. So you can use your left, uh, I'm sorry, you can either use your left button of your mouse to scroll and uh, adjust the slider and you're going to see they get larger the more you go to the right, they get smaller the more you go to the left. Uh, you can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll up to make them larger and scroll down to make them smaller. And you can adjust this to your preference. This isn't necessary on a technical level. This is just something that helps to make it easier for some people to uh, manage their files and folders. Some people like larger uh, folders to work in. Some people like the smaller style. One of the great things about Linux Mint is customization, is the ability that you can make these things your own and modify them to suit your specific needs. So that concludes part two of this video series. I really appreciate you watching. I'd really appreciate if you'd hit the like button below. That helps YouTube's uh, algorithm to uh, spread this video to more users so that uh, this channel can grow. And uh, please hit the subscribe button if you've found this video helpful and you want to see more content like this delivered regularly to you. I love making these videos and I love helping use free software to empower others both professionally and personally. Uh, and then also feel free to click on the next video so that you can continue in the series. Uh, part three will cover uh, installing software and removing software using the software manager. So thanks so much for watching. Take care and stay free.